video begins unit three on cell cycle and cell signaling two seemingly opposed or different um, ideas but they will be linked together quite a bit actually and then for the rest of this semester we'll actually be looking at cell signaling in more detail a couple things we talk about cell division the whole idea behind this is one cell becoming two cells and those two cells being identical to one another um, that will become more and more apparent as we talk about this but we're not going to be looking at how the DNA itself replicates or any of that we're mainly just going to be looking at the cell as a broader concept and then later in this class we'll be looking at the um, DNA and how that works So first, we'll look at the concept of binary fission. Binary fission is something that takes place in prokaryotes. It is the simplest version of cell replication because prokaryotes are very simple cells. They're basically a cell membrane with some cytoplasm and the DNA inside there. And so binary fission, <laughs> very simple steps as you can see here. Essentially, the DNA is going to begin replication. This idea of the origin here just means that that's where the replication starts. DNA is fully replicated. Then the cytoplasm is going to divide, and then you're going to have two new cells. A couple of things to note. At this point, we still have one cell. The cell has to grow in order to divide. There has to be more mass here than there is up here. And then the cell there's two brand new cells. This is the simplest kind of cell division in eukaryotic cells. Cell division is basically this with a lot more pieces added to that. A couple of other terms you want to be familiar with is this idea of the daughter cells that are created. Uh, this two daughter cells is actually a technical term that is used to denote that these two cells are identical to one another and they are also identical to the original parent cell at the top. One thing that is particular to binary fission in prokaryotes is this idea of theta replication. Uh, prokaryotes have a single circular chromosome so if I can kind of replicate that over here and when that DNA begins to replicate you have this point of origin and the replication is going to proceed from both ends and so eventually what happens is just if I can do it here as there's replication this red the new piece of DNA is going to kind of be here and it's going to kind of fall off and it resembles this the Greek letter theta which is just real simple um, they call it theta replication because of that rib, its resemblance to the Greek letter. You can see that a little bit here. If you were to turn it on its head, you can see that theta more clearly. And so if you see theta replication, that is specifically referring to prokaryotic uh, cell division. Uh, another thing that we need to make sure that we understand before we talk about cell division is the difference between chromatin and chromosomes. We have talked about this before. Um, chromatin is a loose state of DNA. This is kind of like the, as I've called it before in other classes, the bowl of spaghetti look where you kind of have the mixed up looking DNA. <coughs> Not random at all. There, there's definitely um, order there. All the pieces are accounted for and known, but it does look messy to us. Whereas chromosomes the more organized version of DNA in that all of that mess has been spooled together, has been condensed, is what the terms you often refer to as. The DNA condenses into chromosomes, and those chromosomes are only present during cell division. Now, how does that work? Well, these tiny proteins inside the nucleus called histones. When the cells and or when the DNA is in the chromatin form, the DNA is bound up on these histones. It's like you can see them here, these little proteins. And essentially think of a histone as being like a spool of thread. They're bound up together. 
Well, as the cell begins division, those histones will get closer and closer together, forming these bundles. Now, one word that I didn't describe to you is a nucleosome. A nucleosome is just if this purple thing here is a histone and this thread is the DNA, the thread plus the DNA plus the histone is the nucleosome. And so these nucleosomes get closer and closer together and they continue to do that and they coil and coil on themselves again and again and again, kind of like if you were to twist a rubber band up and until it starts to twist on itself and you have a little rubber band ball. Same idea, except for in this case you get this X-shaped chromosome. And just a couple of structural items on the chromosome before we move on. The chrome, these two portions of the chromosome, why are there two portions? Well, each one is identical to the other. Remember, the DNA replicates, and so one represents the original strand, the other represents the duplicated strand, and they are joined together at this center region called the centromere. Easy to remember. The centromere plays an important part in cell replication later, which we'll talk about. But these two items are called sister chromatids. At a point in the in the um, division of the cell, the sister chromatids will be separated from one another. A couple of the terms to make sure that we understand are the idea of germ cells and somatic cells. Somatic cells are ordinary cells. Think of skin cells, nerve cells, muscle cells. Just so somatic cells go through the process of mitosis, which is, we think of mitosis as being cell division, but technically it is the division of the nucleus where the DNA separates the nucleus, or separates, and then you have finally, to end the whole process, the idea of cytokinesis. And then what do you end up with? You end up with two identical, not, well, they are daughter cells, but I'm going to use a different word diploid cells. Diploid simply meaning that each cell has two, two or uh, each chromosome exists in pairs. And so in our cells, for instance, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in all of our somatic cells. Half of uh, half of those come from mom, half of those come from dad. So if you can think of, you know, pairs of shoes, the, all the left shoes come from mom, the right shoes come from dad, and you have 23 pairs of shoes inside of a cell. Germ cells, on the other hand, are sex cells. These are the cells that produce gametes. And so they go through a process called meiosis. And the product of meiosis is four unique haploid cells. And we call these cells gametes, which are the sperm and egg. These are four genetically different cells that are created from meiosis. And so to make sure that we understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis, meiosis creates four haploids and those haploid gametes, those are, that is the end product. They will no longer divide or do anything. Whereas mitosis, you have four or two identical diploid cells. Those cells will also eventually go through the whole cycle and divide and create two more each. And so, whereas in meiosis, the cells are done, in mitosis, those cells will continue through the cell cycle on their own.